بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على الرسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته May the peace and blessings of God be upon you all brothers and sisters and friends and welcome to the global Dawa movement show the GDM show Today we're discussing the book of God the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We know the Quran engages with our hearts and our minds and also positively challenges humanity with regards to its authorship. In the second chapter, in the 23rd verse, the Quran says, and if you're in doubt about this book, we have sent to our servant, referring to the Prophet Muhammad, upon whom be peace, then bring one chapter like it and call on your witnesses and supporters besides God, if you're truthful in your claim. This opens a myriad of arguments and a window of opportunity to, do, to discuss the Quran and see if, the Quran is really from the divine and when we scratch the surface and open that window and we start to look at the Quran very carefully with a sincere heart we can conclude that indeed it is from the Lord of everything that exists one particular argument we're going to discuss today is called the literary composition of the Quran the literary arrangement or harmony of the Quran because we know the Quran was revealed over a 23 year period for specific times and places yet it has this amazing harmony, this literary harmony, which suggests that the author must have known the future. And one specific example we're going to give is Surah, Surah Al-Baqarah, the second chapter of the Quran, which has 286 verses. And it was revealed over a nine year period, intensely over a two year period for specific times and places, yet it has this amazing literary harmony and composition and arrangement. This only means that the author must have known the future, which makes sense of God. And with us today, we have Ustad Asif Uddin, who has studied with classical, well, not classical scholars, he's not that old. <laughs> I know he's got grey hair, but he's not that old. May Allah bless him and preserve him. But he studied with amazing scholars in Mauritania, in Qatar, and in Egypt, and even in our home, England. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh How are you? Alhamdulillah How's family? Good mashallah yours? Good to see you, you look very nice with this jacket Jazakallah khair <laughs> May Allah bless you Amen. So This amazing composition in the Quran and specifically in Surah Al-Baqarah is called ring composition What on earth is ring composition? So ring composition shows us the cohesion or the structure or the pattern of uh, a book or a, or a chapter or even a paragraph so there are three main types of ring compositions that uh, occur often in the Quran. So I'm just going to use uh, the paragraphs in place of letters. Uh, the, the letters in place of paragraphs, should I say. Okay. So for instance, you have one type of ring composition, which is A, B, and then B, A. Okay. So that means that if you, as, you, as you've mentioned before, that if you put a, put a karate chop in the middle, everything that is before it, comes after it as well. It's yes. literally a mirror. Everything that is in the first part of the chapter, you'll find in the second part of the chapter. That's the first type. The second type is A, B, and then X, then B, A. Uh, so you'll find that some scholars, Western and Eastern academics, they've mentioned that the X alludes to the central theme of the surah. And the third type, and we'll go over an example of that very shortly. The third type is A, B, A, B. So what is mentioned in the first paragraph is the same as the third paragraph. The second paragraph is the fourth paragraph. Um, so we have an example as a quote, a quote of the second example, A, B, X, B, A. Yes. Uh, written by Mary Douglas. Yes. So Mary Douglas, uh, she refers to similar structures and she has a book called Thinking in Circles and Essay and Ring Composition. What we've done here is basically summarize the second the second form of the ring composition just for people to understand what it means. Basically here's, here's a theme, I woke up in the morning, I left the house, I bumped into a friend whom I hadn't seen since childhood, I came back home, I went to sleep. So if the mirror was in the middle here, which is the, the kind of central theme, what's in the first part of the narrative is reflected in the second part. As you can see, I woke up in the morning, I went to sleep, it's mirrored. I left the house, I went back to the house, I went back home, it's mirrored. Then you have the central theme here. And that's a very good example because as you correctly stated that the 
I bumped into a friend whom I hadn't seen since childhood is the main point of that argument exactly. or that paragraph. Because the other two things are just incidental. Incidental, yeah. Going home and going to sleep is incidental for sure. most people. <laughs> right? So good. So that's ring composition. So but many other people have had ring composition in the in their literary works, for example, poets or orators or whatever the case may be. And they say it's quite it's a it's a primitive form of um, structuring your discourse as well or your, or your piece of literature but what's spe specific about the Quran is is that it has this amazing literary coherence and a far more complex version of it as we're going to discuss and yet it was revealed f over 23 year period for specific times and places which must have me which much must mean that the author must have known the future Exactly, yeah. And I think part, the reason, one of the uh, benefits of it being revealed over a 23 year period, i.e. not in one go, is uh, so that the companions around the Prophet ﷺ were able to internalize and also preserve that message because knowing that this is the final message from all the previous messages that have been sent. But what makes this unique opposed to example uh, literary works, some people even say that the Bible is uh, has a, a ring compositions as well, is the fact that it was revealed over a 23 year period and not all of the surahs were revealed in one go. Yes. So Surah Al-Baqarah was revealed over a nine year period which was pretty much the whole of the Madani period, the first verse, in actual fact 10 years maybe, the first verse to be revealed in Medina was a verse from Surah Al-Baqarah, the last verse to be revealed in Medina was from Surah Al-Baqarah. Oh wow. Yeah, so it just shows And many us of those verses were for specific incident incidents. Yeah, yeah. So, it, I mean, the reason why we're looking at Surah Al-Baqarah as an example is the fact that it. some people would even say this is the not only the longest surah, but the com most complicated surah. So if you're able to uh, kind of find out its pattern, its structure, then everything else will be easy. Okay, give us an example with uh, Surah Al-Baqarah. Sure. So, Surah Al-Baqarah... I'll hold it up for you if you want. There you go. Surah Al-Baqarah... So is this is the kind of schematic representation of the ring composition in Surah Al-Baqarah. Exactly. So this is like the macro level of Surah Al-Baqarah. It uh, consists of uh, 286 verses, verse 1 to 286 there. And then you can say that this falls under the second type of ring composition, which is A, B, X, B, A. So what is in the first part of the chapter is reflected in the second part of the chapter. With, so the, with the central theme. With the central theme, exactly. So you have uh, verse 1 in 20 and 285, 286 which talks about faith and unbelief so they mirror each other they mirror each other you have verse 21 to 39 and 254 to 286 which talks about Allah's creation the next section talks about the deliverance of law for those of you who know about this surah know that this is actually talking about the different laws that were revealed to Musa alayhi salam and the Bani Israel whilst these verses 178 to 253 talk about the laws that were revealed to the Prophet sallallahu and his ummah and companions so they mirror each other sure this is like the Th th these uh, the companions are being told not to be like the Bani Israel in the way that they approach revelation whilst this section being tested talks about uh, you know is 100 verse 104 to 141 mirrors what comes after this but in the middle which is verse 143 talks about the Kaaba and it talks about the the test of faith uh, and uh, competing in good and this really was a turning point. So in the, the verses 142 to 152 talk about the test of faith, the Kaaba is the new Qibla, the direction for prayer. Just to add, what's very interesting as well, if you did a karate chop in the middle yeah. of this chapter, you have the 143rd verse, which you find the word middle. Exactly. Which is amazing. Yeah. And tying that into when it was revealed is that it was a very important uh, event that took place in Medina. In actual fact, you could say it was a turning point for the Ummah, wow. where it was the, the you're turning away from the Bani Israel's Qibla, which is Masjid al-Aqsa, to a new Ummah, the final Ummah of the Prophet Sassam, which is uh, uh, the Kaaba. And what's very interesting, this refers to the past, yeah. this to the present, and this to the future. Yeah, incredible. It's amazing. But you know what's even more amazing? Is that aren't there ring compositions which within each ring composition? That's right. So you not only have a ring composition 
uh, from the macro level and if we take it down a level you, you can there's a ring composition an individual by the name of Raymond Farron has written extent uh, written a paper on this and it's really incredible where he talks about the ring composition from a paragraph level which is uh, verse 1 to 20 he'll actually find another ring composition and then you can take it a notch further uh, someone I, I can't remember his name but he actually discovered this or he talked about this about five six years ago where he talked about the ring composition within the verse itself and this being Ayatul Kursi. So in this ring composition which you have verse verses 254 to 284 there's a verse which is verse 255 which is the verse of the throne we recite after prayers it's, it's a very special verse that itself has a ring composition too right? Yeah the, the verse of the footstool yeah. I've got it here so we could read it and discuss it here for example the first line of this verse says God there is none worthy of worship except he except he he is the ever living the ever watchful neither drowsiness nor sleep overtakes him to him belongs whatever is in the heavens and the earth who is there that can intercede with him except by his permission then you have the middle who knows what is before him before them and after them and they encompass not a thing of his knowledge except for he wills which again is corresponds, corresponds to, to yeah. here him except by his permission then you have his throne extends over the heavens and the earth which corresponds to to him belongs what is in the heaven what is in the heavens and the earth then you have and their preservation ties him not which corresponds to neither drowsiness nor sleep overtakes him overtakes him similar theme then you have and he is the most high the most supreme similar theme by his names and attributes God, there is none worthy of worship except He, the ever living, the ever watchful. So that's a ring composition. So that within would, this ring composition, exactly, and that would actually fall under the second type of ring composition that I mentioned, which is A B X B A. Yes. Wow, this is phenomenal. This is phenomenal stuff. So what has uh, the professor Raymond? K. Farron have said, has what he said about Surah Al Baqarah in general. Sure. So I have a quote here of Professor Raymond Farron. He is a professor uh, in the Arabic language uh, at the University of Kuwait, a Western academic. He says, indeed, this chapter exhibits marvelous justness of design. It is precisely and tightly arranged, as we have seen, according to the principles of ring composition. Even the section lengths fit perfectly in the overall scheme. Moreover, the precise structure serves as a guide pointing to key themes in the chapter these occur according to the logic of the pattern at the centers of individual rings particularly at the center of the whole chapter at the center of the chapter again one finds instructions to face Mecca this being a test of faith identification of the Muslims as a new middle community excellent so if someone wants to research this further, they don't have to know the ins and outs of Arabic language. They could just Agreed. read the English Quran and start studying its themes. And they could go to various scholars. For example, you have Professor Raymond K. Farin. You have another guy who's Belgium, you said? Uh, yeah, he, he's a Christian, in fact, by the name of Michel Sapois. He's written a couple of books, one on Al-Ma'idah Al Al and another book called the, uh, the Composition of the Qur'an. Excellent. And then you have Neil Robinson. Neil Robinson, who wrote Discovering the Qur'an, a Contemporary Approach to the Text. Yep. And then you have, actually, this scholar here. Mustan Sirmir, he wrote the book Coherence in the Quran. Yeah, which this is, is, you said it's a, it's a good summary. I'd say that this is probably the best book to read from the, the books I've mentioned. Like Misha Sapai, he's very technical. I'm not sure he'll be everyone's cup of tea. Yeah. Uh, but Mustan Sirmir, the, the Coherence of the Quran, uh, this is a very good introductory book. This is based on his PhD uh, discussing this, this, this matter. Excellent. So, in summary, the whole of the Quran on a macro level has a literary coherence of composition and if you keep on breaking it down even to a chapter level and a verse level it has this amazing coherence and composition some forms of these literary arrangements include ring composition Surah Al-Baqarah has this ring composition it was ruled over a 29 year period specifically over two year periods intensely for specific times and places yet it has this amazing coherence how on earth the author must have known the future Absolutely. So, I'm just going to end by, this is a beautiful quote, I found it in the book called The Eternal Challenge, written by Muhammad Abdullah Draz, who was a scholar from Al-Azhar University, and we'll end on this, I think it's, it's an amazing quote. He said, How else can it unite so perfectly and harmoniously parts and pieces that do not naturally come together? Is it as a result of an experiment that follows a spontaneous thought? That could not be the case. When each part was put in its position, 
the one who placed them never had a new thought or introduced any modification or rearrangement. How then could he have determined his plan? How could he have made his intention so clear in advance? When we consider such detailed instructions on the arrangement of passages and surahs, we are bound to conclude that there is a complete and detailed plan assigning the position of each passage before they are all revealed. Indeed, the arrangement is made before the reasons leading to the revelation of any passage occur, and even before the start of the preliminary causes of such events. Such are the plain facts about the arrangement of the Qur'an as it was revealed in separate verses, passages, and surahs over a period of 23 years. What does that tell us about its source? Brothers and sisters and friends, read the Qur'an, but it's not just about intellectual gymnastics. Ponder over it because it's the message for our lives. That we are here to worship God. What does worship mean? To love Him, to know Him, to obey Him, and to single all our acts of worship to Him alone. And this is profound, it liberates us from the kind of shackles to our own ego, our desires, society, peer pressure, and you have this true spiritual liberation by obeying the one that essentially is the most merciful and that created everything that exists. Thank you, Sheikh. May Allah bless you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, keep in touch. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.